The Compass. Pipe ball hands on the deck. Aye, aye, mateys. Shiver me timbers. Simka Nolik, what you doing here? We're not Simka Nolik. We're courageous pirates. Yeah, pirates. And today we leave home for the sea. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hooray! You mean, no? No hooray? Oh, yeah! You can't join us without a test. Go and find a special thing. Something no sailor should ever sail the sea without. I can do it, but how? With a map. And it's over there. <laughs> I've never seen a map that's this puny. What are you talking about, puny? That took us a half hour to make. From where you're standing now. Uh-huh. From here, you mean. I guessed it right. First head to the north until you will find... Hold on. But where's the north? It's where the North Pole. Ice and polar bears are. But how do I know which direction the North Pole is? By compass, of course. A compass is a special tool that helps sailors and pilots know in which direction they're traveling, whether in the air or on the sea. Our planet is like a big magnet that has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. These magnetic poles help the needle in the compass find its way. The needle is magnetized, so one of its ends will be attracted to the North Magnetic Pole and point at it, while the other end will always point towards the south. That I know, but there's no compass around here. Then let's make one by ourselves. Out of what? We can use a needle. We just have to magnetize it. And how's it supposed to turn around? In a saucer of water. pointing in the direction of north and the other to the south. But which point's where? Well, there's the window, so that can't be the right way. The north is there. I'm really liking this sharp little fella we've got here. You calling me a little fella? No, it's just the way us pirates talk. All right then, north we go. First head to the north until you see a sleeping monster. Mateys ahoy! Monster on the horizon! Let him do it himself. He... <laughs> hmm. Now turn to the left and go 300 paces more. 300? Exactly. I counted on myself. Uh-huh. Okay, then that means I'll go one, two, three. Now straight ahead until you get right up to the giant tree. <laughs> you call that a tree? Wow, amazing! I can't believe my eyes. It's a real ship compass. It's also called a marine compass. The first compass was invented more than a thousand years ago in ancient China. With its help, the Chinese were able to travel across the desert. And about 200 years later, the compass appeared in Europe. Whether the Europeans came up with the idea for the compass themselves or took it from the Chinese isn't clear. But one thing's for sure, we Fixies remember how those early compasses were built. The first compasses were made with a magnetized needle on top of a floater inside a bowl of water. Later, the needle was put on top of a pin that let it spin freely, and it started to look like the ones we use today. Since the needle of a compass always points to the north, a sailor can easily figure out which direction he needs to turn his ship. If he wants to go north, he follows the needle north. If he wants to go south, he goes in the opposite direction. Your dad brought it home with him late last night from his work. You were asleep. Hold on. I want to check something. What's up? Yep. 
Yeah, they line up together. Of course they line up. If not, how else would you have gotten here? We're done with the needle. It has to go back. First head south, 600 paces. Six for you, matey. I almost caught one yesterday. I chased him by the flag. But if I told my dad, he'd say, It's, it's all inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them. Or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixer, please don't let their secret out. The washing machine. Look at that, Simka. They're showing Titanic on the television. Hey, Nolik, that's not a television. That's a machine for washing laundry. No way. Yeah, it's just a plain old washing machine, Nola, don't you know? Uh-uh. Tell me about it. You're such a great explainer. Inside of a washing machine is a big drum. People put their dirty laundry in there and add a special kind of soap called detergent. When they turn the washing machine on, the drum fills with water, and then the motor starts to spin the drum. That makes the laundry rub together, forcing the soapy water in and the dirt out to make your clothes clean. After that, all that's left is to get out the water by spinning the drum really fast and sending the water down the drain. Oh, thanks a lot, Simka. I always wondered, why would you want to put laundry inside a television? Are you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a funny joke. Get over here. Shh, it's Tom Thomas's mother. She's got headphones on, we're safe. She doesn't hear anything except the music. Now she'll come back, add the soap, turn on her television, and watch the second part of the movie. Again with the jokes. This time I'm really gonna let you have it. Whoa! Nolik, just do what I say. I came up with a plan. What's your plan? To run away! Who's here? Hello? Huh. things to keep in mind with a washing machine to use it right. For example, do you know what can happen if you wash red and white shirts together? Well, the white one might just turn pink. No, it's not because it's embarrassed, but because some of the color from the red shirt happened to get onto the white one. Another important thing to remember is to empty your pockets before you wash your clothes. Things like keys, nails, and chewing gum might not only ruin your clothes, but they can destroy the washer too. And this isn't only about little stuff. Big things like music players and mobile phones have managed to find their way into the washing machine. Oh, sure, these things look nice and clean after a good washing, but they certainly don't seem to want to work anymore. And never, ever put a pet inside of a washing machine. That's just no place for a living thing. You know what, Simka? I've never been laundered in my entire life. We better get out of here, Nolik, right now. And the faster, the better. <sighs> Come on, let's get going. And what about Chusaka? What about Chusaka? Let her get washed up a little in there. Maybe it'll make her nicer. But she could drown the poor thing. I don't think we can do this alone. We should get help from Tom Thomas's mother. 
One, two, stop! What? She moved out of the way. And three! What is that? <gasps> oh, my goodness! Oh, my sweet little baby! How did you get in there? You wait right here in the tub and I'll go get you a towel. So, you wild little beast. Looks like we saved your life. We're friends now? No, like, sure doesn't look like she wants to be our friend. So what do we do now? Same old plan! Run! Box. Go around. Left side. That's crazy. You'll crash. No, I won't. See, I told you. What? Huh? Nothing. Hmm. Now you talk with your computer like it's your friend. Listen, that's enough playing for today. Oh, Mom, just a little more. I'll give you half an hour while I cook dinner, and that'll be enough for today with the computer. Uh... Hmm. This stinks. I'll never get through all of these levels in half an hour. No way. Hey, but what if we could stretch out the half hour? How? We could take the hands on the clock and move them back a little. Mom will catch us. Fine, then let's slow down the speed of the clock. Yeah, but, but how? how? She gotta know things like that. Since olden times, many clocks run with the help of a pendulum. The pendulum controls how fast the hands of the clock turn. If you make it longer, the pendulum will start to swing slower and the clock's hands will slow down. If you make the pendulum shorter, the clock will tick faster. Most clocks that are made today don't use pendulums. They run with the help of springs or with an electronic chip instead. But even so, there are ways to change the speed of these clocks too. Push it. Wow, you did it! It's amazing how much slower it is. That'll give you lots of time to play. But now you gotta slow down the clocks in the kitchen. Yeah, and every other clock you got. I just have to turn this to make the pendulum longer. Uh-huh. And now the clock will go slower. Fire! Now that clock over there. Let's go do it. That's it. We slowed down every clock, and your mom didn't see a thing. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, Tom Thomas, you're cool. Amazing! He got another one! Awesome! You're unbelievable! Way to go! Huh. That's strange. Hooray! Incredible! Yay! I did every level! Oh, thanks! You're both just the Time Masters of the Universe! Yeah, but I'm getting really hungry and Mom hasn't called me for dinner. Because a half hour hasn't passed on the clock. Hey, do you smell that? Something is burning! What happened? A fire? I don't get it. I was just waiting for 30 minutes like I always do. But everything burned this time. Maybe the clock stopped? No, take a look. They're working. Oh, I'll make you some oatmeal. Oatmeal for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I need to, uh, I'll be right back. You see what you've done, Time Masters of the Universe? You gotta go speed those clocks back up. Okay, okay, we'll speed them up. They'll be caught up in no time. Humans have come up with lots of different ways to measure time. For example, if you stand a stick in the ground, you can measure the time of day by watching where its shadow falls. That's a very simple clock called a sundial. Another simple and ancient clock is a water clock. It keeps track of time by measuring how much water has poured out of it. And if the clock uses sand instead of water, it's called an hourglass. 
But humans weren't able to accurately keep track of the time until they invented mechanical clocks. They come in all sorts of sizes, from grandfather clocks to watches worn around the wrist. Today, we also have easy to read and accurate electronic watches and clocks. But the most accurate clock of them all is the atomic clock. It tells the entire world the exact time. Tom Thomas, why is your alarm clock ringing in the middle of the night, huh? Really? Is it still night out? Look, Tom Thomas. Uh, but the clock says that it's morning. Interesting. Yesterday, Fire and I sped up all the clocks. So that's the reason the alarm went off. Sped them up? Are you crazy? Tom Thomas asked us. Hmm, so what do we have to do now? Don't you know? Get to school, it's time. Uh... I'm joking. Whew. Go back to sleep. Don't worry, I'll get all the clocks working right again. Can I go and fix them with you? Ha! <laughs> fix them? You boys are the ones that always make the problems. Fixies go to fixie schools and study to be masters. There's so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There is it one of The fire extinguisher. So, who can tell me? In the home, what is the greatest danger of them all? Chuzaka. Well, dogs are dangerous for us, but what is very scary for us and for humans? Fire! <laughs> Where? I was just answering what you asked us. Although your joke was awful, Fire, your answer was actually correct. Nothing can be worse than getting caught inside a house on fire. Don't know much about chemistry, but I can handle circuitry. That's an interesting idea. I have to try it out. And that's why every Pacamat has a fire extinguisher inside of it. And how do you turn them on? Well, I'll show you at the end of the lesson. Nolik, listen, yell fire. How come? I just want to find out how the professor turns on a fire extinguisher. Forget it, Fire. I won't do it for you. Blah. Fire! Huh? Huh? You again! I was joking. It's a stupid kind of joke, and I want you to leave right now. Actually, I should call your parents to discuss this terrible behavior. Fire is no joke at all. Remember, never fool with fire. Of course, you should never play with matches or with lighters. Everybody knows that. But those aren't the only things that can cause a fire inside of a house. So can a stove or a fireplace. And don't forget electrical appliances, like electric burners, space heaters, and irons. If you act carelessly around any of these appliances, they can cause a fire. And we should never forget to take extra special care with sparklers, candles, and fireworks. Sparks can jump off of them and set fire to highly flammable things like paper, wood, or cloth. So, what do you do if a fire suddenly breaks out? That's right! You call the fire department by dialing the number for all emergencies, 911. Huh? What's going on? No way. No way! Fire? It's burning for real! Fire! What do I do? Oh, yeah! I need a fire extinguisher! Where are you? And that's how a Pacamat can become a fire extinguisher. Do you understand? We understand. There's a fire! It's over there! Enough! You don't know when to stop, Fire! I'm not joking this time! Please believe me, it's there! Hmm. Nice try, Fire. Oh, look! He even used smoke this time! No, Simka. That smoke's from a fire! Uh-huh. I'm sure that this time it's for real. It's the truth! I swear I'm not lying! This time I think it's true. He's not joking. We've got ourselves a real fire here! Tula! Simka! Turn off the soldering 
soldering iron. Uh-huh. Got it. Be careful, kids. You have to stay back here, away from the fire. And what can I do to help? Take out your fire extinguisher. <sighs> Long ago, people used to put out fires with just water or sand. Today, people also use fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are cylinders with hoses. They're usually painted red, so they're easy to see. The cylinder is filled up with a special powder or foam. If someone needs to put out a fire, they point the hose at the fire, pull out the safety pin and squeeze the handle. The foam or powder shoots out of the extinguisher and puts out the fire. Our fire extinguishers are just too small for this fire. We have to find Professor Eugenius to put it out. I already did. All right, where's the fire? Oh. Ooh. Hooray! Hooray! We, we put, put out the fire. fire! You fixies are just the greatest. Thank you, you saved the whole laboratory. <laughs> Not at all, colleague. If not for you, Fixies, I can't even fathom how this could have ended. And what I'm wondering is how the fire got started at all. Fire? I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, sure. Then who was yelling, fire, fire? You know what? Maybe it was you that set the fire. Well, if that's what happened, don't even think about coming back to school without your parents. Colleague, colleague, wait. It's all my fault. I didn't turn off the soldering iron. Forgive me. Now we know whose parents the school should be calling. <laughs>